evening everybody, how are we all doing? So I've parked on pond. I hope you're all doing fine and had a great day. The sun has actually been out today and nearly nearly blooming broke a sweat. I'm not joking, I've been I had to sit in majority of the day to wait for a delivery and then the time I got that there was nothing I couldn't do anything. In fact at Tell I went to B and M and got a um Tom's dog, Rainer, an extra large dog bed. So yeah. It's got some chicken stop sleeping on my settee. Um, I don't mind the dogs being on settee because these, oh, at the minute, because these are whole ones and I do need some new ones. Millie always picks a moment. Um, so I've just been sat here and then I realised, hmm, went from the video. I might as well just talk. Anyway, so, excuse what I'm, I don't know what that face is, but it's like, excuse what. I'm just been sat watching cats, to be honest, playing as well. But, I know that I talk about fibro a lot and sometimes, you know, it's good to know that there's someone else out there that has it because I remember when I first heard about it, I ever ever heard it once in my whole entire life. And that was someone that I knew that lives around the corner. Never heard it before, so when I got diagnosed with it, I'm like, oh, what the hell's that? You know what I mean? But when the doctor finally diagnosed me with it, they said, well, we only diagnosed you with Millie fibro when we haven't got el anything else to diagnose you with or there's nothing to explain why you're feeling the way you are. But, oh, thanks. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll ex you know. Anyway, my mind's just going blah, 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 at the minute. I don't know what. <laughs> so I just sat here thinking, and I know we have people that have fibro have similar symptoms like chronic pain, chronic fatigue, brain fog. I know if I forgot what I want to say then. Mm -hmm. Brain fog. And other... Sorry, that was my leg. And obviously the list goes on and on. Some are okay with theirs. They're not in much pain where some can literally not move. We've all got our own story and experiences. And I was just sat here thinking... Why do I feel ashamed of having fibro? Why do I feel like that when I need to go to speak to the doctor? Because I feel like doctors, they just don't get it. Or is it me? <laughs> this is my fibro story, so I'm just going to say this is how I feel. So when I got diagnosed... After years and years of waiting for someone to tell me what's wrong, um, I was like, when I finally got that diagnosis and they just handed me a leaflet, and I said, "All right, okay, what now? Well, there's nothing more we can do for you. Just exercise, stay active." Threw me a pushed me a leaflet across the, the table. I'm like, "Well, that's not really." Um, I said, well, that's not, what, what? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I felt like that when my eldest Anna got diagnosed with autism and we waited years and years and she finally got a diagnosis uh, just as she turned 16. And then we basically were sold, that's it. Here's some websites, go on and have a look. So that's what we did, we just basically got left to it then. It's like, well, what? What do we do for her? Blah, blah, blah. Obviously, I didn't know much about autism back then. But anyway, no, I won't get into that. That's even a different story on its own. But with fibro, I feel like when I got my diagnosis, I left there and I cried. I'm not kidding. I did. I, things like this is coming back to me little by little. And I'm like, I can't believe. I remember because I had to get the buses. I had to get two buses to where I needed to be. And then I had to figure out how to get home. So there, there were another two buses because by uh, I didn't have I didn't I wasn't driving then, and I just felt let down, or like puzzled on what the hell had just happened, and like I spent you know, two hours getting to this appointment, and for ten minutes I just giving me a, a diagnosis and then a leaflet, and then on the way you go. Millie, you pack it in. No. Bloody dog. 
<laughs> just digging her elbows in and it hurts. Um, but yeah, so I'm not kidding. Have you ever tried stopping yourself from crying when you're so upset? It's hard. I can't do it. Once I start, once my eyes start welling up my eyes, I said, did I say something else? I don't know. Once my eyes start welling, that's it. I have no control. I cannot stop myself. I love the money. I'm getting upset. And I'm, I'm on bus and I'm looking out the window, my head down, <laughs> my head slightly up because I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm like, what the hell did I do wrong to deserve this? Obviously, I didn't know much about fibro, so I went home and researched it. And obviously, if you've got so many symptoms, uh, is it symptoms or so many things around your body? And if you're thinking that's how the doctor diagnoses you, especially in the UK, I don't know about anywhere else, because I got told there's no blood test, they can't tell you a blood by a blood test that you've got fibro. So I'm like, oh, I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I'm not kidding, I, I remember crying all the way home. <sighs> yeah, and then I'm like, what, what, what now? What do I do? I put up exercise. I'm then tired for the remainder of the day, maybe two days after, and I, I, I just couldn't work out why. And then I'm now... What's well, Olivia on her Xbox? Well, I heard this, like, hee-hee. It's Olivia. And then I'm like... Oh, one second, guys. Sorry, I forgot. I'm out of breath. Uh, I forgot I had a washing machine on and like that. I had to put it on another spin because uh, I had to do a quick wash. So, sorry, I had a bunch of a biscuit on my way back. <laughs> sorry, I'm, where were I? We're gone. <laughs> forgot what I was saying. So, yeah, when I'm, so now when I, I need to see the doctor, I remember at the beginning when I used to go back with every little thing, I thought, oh my God, something wrong with me, I'm dying, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm too afraid to go because I feel ashamed. I feel ashamed of having fibro. I feel ashamed of having mental health. And people don't help by shaming you. Um, and then maybe calling you hypochondriac. But in reality, you're like, but I need to see the doctor. Is this a new symptom? Is this a heart attack? I don't know. So let me sit, talk about that for a minute. So for the past few nights, and it happened... I've had a few other episodes where I've gone to bed and I've laid down, but I've laid on my, my side. Now, usually I'm fine laying on my, at my side, even though it hurts a little bit, but I feel more comfortable. But my chest feels like it's getting pressure pushed on it, and then my left arm feels weird. Ding, ding, there I go. Overthink it. Is it I'm, I'm, I'm having an attack or is it just... You know what I mean? Is it an anxiety attack? I don't know. See, not like now, I've got it, but that, I, I know that bit is inflammation of the ribs. Feels uncomfortable. But this feels like pressure. Um, and again, it happened to me last night. But then I rolled on my back and it still happened a little bit. And I thought, when do I go to the hospital? Do I go? And Because the time I get there, they'll do a blood test and there'll be nothing. There'll be nothing. And then I get sent home at two o'clock in the morning, like last time. So that's put, that puts me off seeing the GP. And then you don't know when to contact the GP and whether you can actually get in to see the GP. But yeah, these past few nights. Now let me know in the comments below if you've experienced this or it's just, is it just me? Do I need to see the doctor? Do I need... I don't know. Or is it because I'm laying on my left side? I don't know. Or am I doing something? I don't have a clue. And I'm like... Like... Also, also yesterday... I, uh, I'm trying to think. I don't know. Mid-morning. Um, all of a sudden, I'm looking here. I felt like my heart was racing so fast. I thought, what will that Oh, Jesus Christ, is it trying to escape from my chest or something? But I tried the dieting, I've tried everything to stay normal weight, but my medication doesn't help because that makes you gain weight. Now I'm like, is it the weight gain? Is it because I'm a bit tubby? I, um, you know what? I'm trying to think all these solutions before I go to doctors because I'm guaranteed I, I, they make you feel worse, I think, sometimes. Depending on who I see, 
this one particular doctor that I really like because I never can get hold of him because he's, he must be popular but he, he's so understanding and where others just look at you like oh, yes and what do you want us to do about it you know what I mean <sighs> guys I, I just don't know I don't know if my body's having a meltdown or midnight crisis I don't <laughs> I'm not laughing because it's funny it's not funny I just don't know what to do I just don't get it fibro and some doctors do make you feel like you're going loopy in the head or they make you feel uncomfortable going because you don't know whether it, it's just part of fibro or it could be this it could be anxiety attack you know what I mean? But this doesn't feel like an anxiety attack because it feels like pressure, like someone... It's not even in the centre of my chest, it's under my boob, my left boob. And it just feels like pressure and it's like, boom, my heart's like... It feels like it's doing that. Like, like squeezing tight. That's all I can describe it. But I don't know how... I, I, I don't know about you guys, but I feel embarrassed. I feel embarrassed and ashamed of having fibro and mental health because I feel like people judge you and especially when you mention mental health, people think you're a nutcase and you're off your trolley. I'm not kidding, but I don't like saying it anymore because I feel so embarrassed. Um, and the only people I talk to about that is my mental health workers. But then if you listen to the word mental, just say it in your head. It actually sounds mental, you know what I mean? I'm not thinking, well, you'll be quiet, Millie. But I feel like I've got a screw loose. Maybe I have. <laughs> I think we all have a little bit inside us, don't we? But um, the word mental, I think the could word give it a better name than that because sometimes it just makes it sound more, so much worse than what it is because it could just be depression. But, you know, it's got mental health. Um, and I'm never going to get rid of mine. I'm never going to get rid of this fibro. All I need to know now is to learn to live with it. And that is very hard. Because every minute the pain is there. Every minute I'm tired. Every minute I'm emotional. And there's things I want to do, but I physically can't. Like, and the support I need. And it's embarrassing where I need to ask my, obviously my older daughter, I'm not, not going to ask my son or my youngest, um, to help me in the bath, you know what I mean? I can't, like, I can't lock that door for the fear of either I've fallen or I'm stuck or I need help with washing my hair, washing my back, because I can't reach. There's days where I can't get me, obviously I've done that with my hands, I'm resting my, my my arm there, so I'm doing that. But other than that, my car and these things are so I want to do so much, but with in a body that just does the wound does not up to Jesus. Well, that's another fibro speech it affects your speech, and I'm embarrassed with that because people just look at me and think, oh, she's just a blank pot. Well, you know, people that I feel like they don't take me seriously obviously um because sometimes i do take them account myself and that's the only way i feel people will probably like me a little bit if i diss myself a little bit sorry i can feel my eyes watering and i'm trying to hold them open so they don't Me, say hello what's the sort of my eyes out <laughs> but yeah and I shouldn't have to feel like I have to do that to take the mic out myself just to be heard. And same with mental health. When I go to my appointment, I feel like they're just saying, oh, you know, we've been here before and you managed to get through it. And that's what I really want to hear right now. I'm telling you how I feel. Like the other day there when I went on, when were it? Sunday. I've never felt worse than I did when I went in. Anyway, guys, I'm going to love you and leave you because I've been babbing on for 15 minutes and I, I do apologise, it's late. But, like I said, this is my fibro story and I, I, I feel like, I feel ashamed and embarrassed to have it. And let me know if you if you guys feel the same. Let me know about the chest pain as well. Do you get that or do I need to be seriously worried? I, I don't know. I'm, 
I, I don't panic before I go to bed anymore. I don't think about it. I am thinking about it now because I'm talking about it. But, but when I go to bed, I don't think about it. It's just when I lay down or I'm laid on my side and it starts. Oh, it's so uncomfortable. Anyway, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll catch up with you in my next video. Don't forget to hit that like button. It does mean the world to me. And, keep, and I love it when you comment. And, yeah, subscribe if you're new to this channel so you don't miss another one. Or, I'm saying that wrong, press the notification bell. It's that time of night now, now guys, where, where my mind just goes and me, I'm losing my marbles. <laughs> no, I'm tired. Anyway, guys, good night, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you later. Bye-bye.